Hi, guys. So, don't want to take up your time doing a bunch of non-necessary jibber-jabber. So, on with chapter 20. It felt good getting a good night's sleep. Well, let me rephrase that. It was good to have the chance for a good night's sleep. I kept waking up to phantom noises. So, I decided to get up while it was still early. Actually, there was no deciding involved. Getting up early had become my thing when we moved up here. I wanted to get a head start on the work that still needed to be done. As I walked into the kitchen, I caught a silhouette out of the corner of my eye, standing at the sliding glass door. I froze with fear, staring straight ahead. It was only when I heard a distinct voice say, Morning, that I realized the silhouette was on the inside, and it was Scott who was standing there. Oh, wow, you just scared the bejesus out of me, I laughed. Why are you up so early? Kathy and I got into a fight, so we were up late. So I just stayed up, he said. Oh, should I ask? I told her that it might be a good idea if she did go home to her grandfather's temporarily until this is over. Then I wouldn't have to worry about her. Oh, wow, you didn't learn from Lisa's mistake? You do know that Lisa said the same thing yesterday. Oh, wait, yeah, you do. You were right there when Kathy explained why she got upset. I laughed and shook my head. I know, stupid, eh? It just came out, he said. So what happened? I asked her to marry me, said Scott. What? Are you kidding? She must have been really mad, I stated. Oh, yeah, Scott replied. I had to think of something fast, and all you could think of was to ask her to marry you, I asked. He nodded. I do love her, Brad. Oh, I know you do, you dumbass, I laughed. I guess I better get my grandma's ring off my dad and make it official, said Scott. Oh, so she said yes then. Yep, answered Scott. Then why don't you seem happy, I asked. She's a great catch, you know. I know, I am happy. I'm just worried about what's going on around here. Yeah, me too, I said, as I came up and stood beside him, looking out the door. Well, the sun will be up soon. Why don't I put on some coffee and uh, we can do a perimeter search? Good idea, he answered. During our search, the dogs did their routine of running back and forth and then stopping at the tree line. But once again, we found no signs. It was too weird. How could something cause so much commotion and then not even leave any signs? I was pouring our coffee when the phone rang. Geez, I said, grabbing it on the first ring. I almost yelled, hello, into the receiver. I wanted the caller to know I was irritated. Hey, Brad, it's Riley. I didn't wake you, did I? No, I said, but I can't speak for the rest of the house. Oh, I'm sorry. I assumed you guys would be up early. I was hoping you'd let me come over and give you a hand, said Riley. Well, actually, I was going to give you a call last night, but I got preoccupied. Listen, um, I was hoping you could bring your little sister with you. I kind of promised my daughters that she would come over and play. Oh, yeah, she would love that, he answered. Okay, cool, I said. But listen, uh, can you hold off till around nine? So the rest of the house has a chance to wake up, I suggested. Definitely, he agreed. I'll see you around nine. After I hung up, I heard the distinct sound of Lisa's slippers staggering down the hall. As she entered the kitchen, she still had her eyes closed. Who was that, she asked, pointing to the phone. That was Riley, I answered. Who, she grumbled as she leaned over the counter, resting her head in her forearms. The kid we met at Home Depot yesterday. When she didn't answer, I assumed she was trying to remember in her sleepy haze. You know, the one who was coming over to give us a hand? Still, she didn't reply. Scott was sitting at the table watching, and when she didn't answer, he laughed quietly and pointed to her. She's sleeping, he said, laughing even harder. Let's take a picture. I bet you she was sleepwalking and won't even remember your conversation. I used to do that when I was a kid. Never remembered a thing. I let Scott take the picture of sleepwalking Lisa on his cell. 
and I gently led Lisa back to bed. This was something I've had to do before. Not often, mind you, but definitely a few times in the, in the past. I took a quick look at the clock. It was almost seven. I figured I would let her sleep until about 8.30. Lisa was an early riser normally, but with all this nightly action lately, we had been somewhat sleep-deprived. And even when you did have a quiet night like we did last night, you'd still sleep on the edge waiting to be woken up. I took over the barn responsibilities after the goats disappeared. Lisa had enough on her plate with the house and the kids. Plus now she and Kathy started a catering business and it was just starting to gain momentum. Scott and I were starting to give some thought to the type of business we wanted to start. Right now, things were still okay for us. The insurance from my accident was still paying me regularly, and Scott was claiming unemployment insurance as well. But I still thank God we have savings to fall back on. Everyone was up and ready when we heard Riley and his sister pull up the lane. Jen and Bree were so excited, I had dropped the ball this time, not realizing what was going on with my two oldest. I just assumed that because they had each other, they would be fine. I was an only child, but we lived in the same house from the day I was born. Heck, my parents still owned that same house. I was lucky enough to have a lot of kids in the neighborhood to play with. Lisa answered the front door. I was a little surprised when Riley and his little sister came in, and they were followed by their mother. After I introduced all of us, and Riley introduced his little sister, Tina, and their mother, Irene. Irene, who had the softest feminine voice I had ever heard, handed Lisa a homemade apple pie, which Lisa accepted graciously. We all circled around, groaning about how wonderful and delicious it looked. And it truly did. Then she put a big green garbage bag on the table and started pulling something out of it as her daughter Tina helped her. It was a beautifully made quilt. Irene went on to explain that when she heard we were from the city, she decided to give the quilt to Lisa as a gesture of friendship. Irene went on to explain that all country homes must have a homemade country quilt. The three girls already made a beeline for their bedrooms with their new friend. So Scott, Riley, and I went to take a good look at the outside stairs first. The two women were fawning over the quilt as we left. Once outside, Riley said he hoped it wasn't too much that his mom insisted on coming with them to meet us. He said since his dad died, she doesn't really associate with her old friends so much. Riley continued by saying his mom said that all their old friends were uncomfortable when she was around, so she just avoided them now. Scott and I both tried to uh, put him at ease by saying that it was a really thoughtful gesture on her part and that Lisa and Irene would most likely become fast friends. Scott was quick to include Kathy as well. Once around the side of the garage to look at the stairs, Riley asked what caused the damage. We hadn't thought about the cover story, so I just said the first thing that came to mind. Age and weather popped out of my mouth. When I looked at Scott, he gave me a little nod of approval. But when I looked at Riley, he had a sly smile on his face. No, no, it couldn't be that, he said, as his face reddened a little bit. After a few seconds of awkward silence, Riley finally admitted that it was he and his father who had done all the new upgrades to the house. And he said the stairs were specifically made for heavy-duty commercial use because that's what the previous owners asked for. Huh, I said, I wonder why. Your guess is as good as mine. The son-in-law had us come out and do it. I think he wanted to sell the place as a house with a business area above the garage, if I'm not mistaken. That's weird, said Scott. Okay, let me get this straight, said Riley. You want a set of stairs up to the apartment from inside your house, right? We both nodded. Okay, well, as far as these stairs go, he said pointing to the outside stairs. We should probably fix them because you need to have a fire escape anyway, whether you use them or not. We can always put a reinforced door at the top if it's break-ins you want to discourage. 
we both agreed. Then he turned and headed around to the front of the garage. Scott and I shrugged our shoulders as we trailed behind him. When we got to the front breezeway door, he turned around and asked if he could just go ahead and tell us the ideas he had when him and his dad were working for the last people. He said, I think it's my age that prevented them from taking me seriously, but I still believe my ideas would have held up. I told him, be my guest. Okay, I see you put on the reinforced doors you bought. That's good. He opened the door and walked in about five feet. This is what I think we should do. We can put the stairs right here, he said, as he held his hands about three to four feet out from the wall. You lose the straight-through aspect of the breezeway, but luckily you have a nice wide throughway here, so it will more than accommodate a set of stairs. Easy peasy, he added. Scott and I looked at each other, both of us clearly thinking the same thing. Why hadn't we thought of that? It made perfect sense. It's the only way you're going to be able to have the stairs on the inside, unless you want to put them in the garage, which can be done just as easily, but I think this is way better, he added. Scott and I both agreed. I'm not too keen on the stairs leading into my bedroom, though, said Scott. No, they won't, because we're going to make some minor adjustments there, too, answered Riley with a mischievous smile on his face. Right now, it all opens up there, except for the bedroom and your bathroom, right? Scott nodded. Okay, well, I think what we should do is switch your bedroom with the dining room. That's one wall and doorway across from the kitchen. Then, turn the living room into a dining room, tear down the original bedroom wall, and there's your new living room. So, the new stairs will actually lead into your new living room. Now, the only issue I can think of is the small deck that looks out onto the back. Right now, you have a sliding glass door off your dining room to get to it. But, after the changes, it'll be off your new bedroom. Is that going to cause a problem? Riley asked. Not for me, said Scott, looking at me. No, it all sounds perfect, actually. But, it all sounds expensive, too. How much do you think it'll cost? I asked. Well, we'll need to make a list but I'm sure we can do it all for under 500 And if we hurry, we can probably get the boys from work to throw our order on the truck when they make their deliveries out this way, and we can start in a couple of hours. Sounds great, I said, but Riley, I need to know the bottom dollar of the total job before we can start. Oh, um, okay, well, like I said, 500 will be more than enough to cover it. I doubt you'll need more than that unless you want me to include the flooring. You may have to change upstairs and paint. Oh, wait, he said. Um, you're going to put another reinforced door at the top of the outside stairs too, right? Yeah, I think that's definitely needed, I said. Okay, well then, add the cost of the door in as well, he said. But I think it'll be in that ballpark. Regardless, we will know when we put the in, put in the order. And if it's too much, we can cut back. Plus, I get my discount as well. Riley, I need to know what you want for yourself as well, I said finally. It would be my luck that materials would be under 500 and then he would charge me three to 400 for labor. I was thinking that to myself. It looked like Scott was thinking the same thing because he gave me a quick smile when Riley looked away for a second. I'm not charging you anything for my time, Riley said. What? I almost yelled. You have to make money. You're supporting your mom and your sister. Brad, I'm doing this to be neighborly, and I need to feel close to my dad right now. This was the last job we worked on together, he said, choking up. Plus, I'm not going to be working alone. I plan on you guys helping me too. Oh, for sure, I said. But Riley, I have to pay you something. I'll tell you what, he said. If you like my work, then you can tell people about me. I'm trying to start my own construction company, and I'm having a hard time because I'm so young. Okay, deal, he said, and held out his hand. Okay, deal, I said, shaking the hand he had extended. Okay, good. Let's get this list made, because I've only got today and tomorrow off, and I have to be back up to work on Friday morning. Riley was able to get our list of materials added to the truck that was doing deliveries in our town, which saved us tons of time, 
and saved us from having to make several trips in the van, resulting in several tanks of gas. So we were pretty happy with him for that. But there was something nagging at me about the whole thing. Who would give away his time to a, so a total stranger? He practically begged us to let him help. I had to say it bothered me a lot, but we needed the help. Now, the only thing I need to worry about was how to keep him alive. And that's the end of chapter 20. Okay, guys, I'm hurrying to get this up for you guys for tonight. You take it easy, and we'll see you back here in a couple of days, maybe tomorrow. Okay, bye for now.